What's up everyone, welcome back to another video. Let's talk about food photography because it's your Tuesday video. Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, where each and, every, each and every Tuesday we bring you a brand new, fresh photography tutorial. This week we're talking about food photography. Now we've talked about this before on this channel. We've done full kind of getting started with food photography videos, which I'll link down in the description and in the comments in case you want to go check that out. That's where we cover kind of camera angles, lighting, setup, backdrop, all the stuff you need to know to get started taking photos of food. But today, we're going to go through three different things you can do to really enhance and maximize that food photography and get the best possible results. Now, food photography is an extremely exciting type of photography, I think, because you are in full control of pretty much every aspect of the photography, whether it's the lighting, the subject, the framing, what to include in the frame, what to exclude from the frame, the colors you choose to have there, all that stuff. You are completely in control and you can really change anything about it that you don't like or that you want to include in there. And that is why I think it can be so creative along with product photography. It's an exciting type of photography to try out. Now, whether you're using natural light, so from a window, that's my favorite type because it's nice and soft, nice and diffused and nice and easy to work with, or whether you're using a continuous light, which I do often throw into the mix as well, because sometimes you just need your own light source. No matter which one you're using, let's talk about how you can shape that in camera. Obviously we can do this in Lightroom or Photoshop, we can use gradient filters in Lightroom to kind of darken areas of the photo and really shape that light into a, a beam to hit our hero product, but we can actually do it in camera really easily as well. If you're using a natural light source like a window for example, if you have curtains, you can pull them into a strategically closed position to really create one kind of shaft of light. So if you've got the window like this and you close the curtains up so that just a strip of light is available, if you move your setup around near to the window, you can create that strip of light mainly hitting your hero product. Now, of course, because it's soft, it's diffused, it is going to spread out and light the whole scene. We do want that, that's great news, but it's just gonna be a little bit darker off to the sides. And this way you do darken the sides of the photo and really focus in on that hero product. That can be a really nice way of adding a bit of mood, a bit of dimension, and a bit of drama, almost like a story to your photo. Now, of course, you can do this with a continuous light as well. You just need some kind of physical object to block that light. Whether it's an ornament, whether it's a cardboard box, you just wanna make sure you position those things close enough to the light and kind of spacing so you create one kind of shaft of light coming through, which is gonna hit your hero product. Now, again, if you're using a nice diffused light, a nice bit of soft boxing, you're still gonna get light kind of spilling onto the whole scene. Ideal, we still want light there, but this is going to allow you to create a bit of mood, a bit of drama, and ultimately tell a bit of a story with your photo. Now, the next thing I wanna talk about is telling a story, adding an extra dimension, by using the location and what you include and exclude from the frame. So let's talk about, for example, this cocktail shot. Now, where I've chosen to shoot this, rather than just shooting it on my table inside or setting up a nice light on a table, black background, done. I've decided to shoot this outside on a nice piece of wood and I've positioned plants all around it to give a lush kind of vibrant feel because the story I want to convey here is I want it to feel summery. I want you to feel the sunlight and the warmth in the photo. So where this cocktail is situated is a place that it might be enjoyed. So it adds that extra kind of context to the photo, which I really, really like. I like being able to tell a story like that. You know, you could do a nice close up of this cocktail indoors, dark background, moody lighting, Lovely, it's gonna look great, but that contextualized story of having it outside, the sunlight kind of hitting it, the nice wood, the plants everywhere, makes it feel like, you know, you could be at a cocktail party. You could be out there enjoying the sunset. You could be out there just enjoying the sun. It gives you a story around the cocktail. The same thing is true with these cookies. I've tried to position things in the frame that makes sense. So for example, I've got a nice glass of milk there. I've got some crumbled up cookies. So you get a feel for the texture and it's not just a sterile environment. 
environment. You've got kind of crumbled up cookie as if someone's been enjoying the cookies, not just nice and clean and perfect. We've also got the dark coffee beans there, which go really nicely with the dark chocolate in the cookies. So we've got a nice color match there as well. It just gives a bit more context and a bit more story around the cookies rather than just photographing the cookies themselves. The last thing I want to talk about, and this kind of adds into telling that story, is interaction. This can be really, really big for food photography. This can really add a lot to those photos. That can be as simple as, let's look at these pancakes, for example. They look great by themselves. It can be as simple as pouring that syrup on, right? The act of pouring it and actually getting that in the photo just adds an extra dimension, pulls the viewer in, and you can almost feel it. You can almost taste it. It's as if you're there and it's being poured on for you. Iced coffee is great for this as well. You know, you've got the coffee there, you've got the ice. It all looks great as is. It's all set up with nice lighting and backdrop and all that kind of stuff. And then we just pour the milk in. And by photographing the pour itself rather than afterwards, you get the milk mixing with the coffee, moving around the ice. That looks great by itself plus the pour, it just feels like you're in the moment. You're capturing that specific moment and you've got a bit of a story behind what's going on rather than just here's some iced coffee. Adding in those three things to your food photography will really kind of bring it up, enhance it, give you a feel. And ultimately, you know, a lot of people will tell you that photography is about telling a story. Well, in a lot of ways, I think that is true. Not all the time, but a lot of the time that does feel like it's the case. And certainly adding an element of storytelling can enhance the photography. And here in particular, it does feel like adding just enough context. You know, story sometimes feels a bit strong, but I think context sometimes makes more sense. Adding a bit of context, adding the story about what's happening, give you the feel of the food, of the drink, rather than just a nice photo. Now you've got the feel of it. Now you're drawn in. You've got that extra dimension. Can work wonders for food photography. Now, like I say, if you're looking to get started with food photography, I'll pop those links down to those videos down in the comments so you can check them out. Of course, there's all the kit that we use for these photos, for this video, for everything down in the description. So you can go and check that out for yourself as well. Some really nice prime lenses, actually. Some zoom lenses. I have a 24 to 70 for this kind of thing, but a 35 mil prime, an 85 mil prime, and of course a 50 mil prime. Whew beautiful lenses for this kind of stuff. So check that all down in the description. Of course, if you enjoy the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. New stuff all the time, including possibly some live streams in the very near future. I will, of course, see you in the next video. But until then, as always, thanks for watching.